Welcome back to our vlog. Eric and I are so happy to see you all. As always, we hope you are doing wonderful around the world wherever you are tuning in from. Eric and I have some incidents to get you caught up on, but also some news, new news, to uh, bring you here on the vlog. So you're probably wondering why I'm wearing this outfit instead of my normal uniform. That is because my husband and I are expecting a baby. So I'm growing a human inside of me right now and we are so excited. Our baby is due in July. So I'm going to be taking on a different role here at South Metro. I'm gonna be at our headquarters more often helping um, our boss with a lot of the work that she does here internally. And we're gonna allow Eric and some of our other part-time PIOs take over that role that, that I've had for a little while to make sure the district is covered and they're able to safely respond to all of these calls. So um, you may not see me for a while, but um, I've been so honored to be a part of these vlogs and I might make some guest appearances. So we will see but I just wanted to get you caught up on a big life update uh, for me and and my husband and, and our growing family so thank you all as Connor said I'm going to bring you up to speed on some of the recent major incidents that South Metro responded to a couple weeks ago we had a very bitter cold snap here in the Denver metro area which included wind chill values of negative 25 degrees Fahrenheit it was miserable for our firefighters to be out working but that didn't stop them from having to do their job and that included on the scene of a couple different structure fires. The first one that I'm gonna show you takes you inside the cab of Battalion 2's pickup on the way to a working garage fire in the city of Littleton. Ladder 12, engine 16, engine 15, medic 12, Battalion Chief 2, safety 35, Channel SMS off 3, reported residential structure fire, map page T22B6, Southridge Way, ladder 12, engine 16, engine 15, medic 12, battalion chief 2, safety 35, channel SMS off 3, reported residential structure fire. Weather's going to be winds out of the north at 10. Okay, I copy. We have a reported garage fire that is attached to the house, and we have winds out of the north at 10. That's a firm at 1420. Do we have reports of evacuation? That's a 
that pay for them. It looks like we've gotten additional calls from neighbors reporting that they are seeing visible flames. Structure fire, map page T twenty two B six Southridge Way Engine thirteen, engine thirty three, medic eleven, district one, med one, confirmed residential structure fire. Off one, confirmed residential structure fire, map page T twenty two B six Southridge Way Off one. Dispatch, Battalion 1. Battalion 2. I'm sorry, Battalion 2. I'm on scene. I do have a uh, working fire with a large volume of fire in the uh, garage. We also have smoke showing from the attic. We'll be in the offensive strategy transitioning off of tank water. And uh, Battalion 2 will have Ridge Command. Battalion 2, copy your own scene today. Working fire. We've got a large volume of fire in the garage. You also have smoke showing from the attic. It's going to be assuming Southridge come in at 1423. Sir, are you the homeowner? The lady is in my house. She says there's bullets going off. Okay, is there anybody else home? No, just a cat. Okay. And the cat's still in Command, there? Command, coach, hold on Command copies. You're on scene, Medic 12. I want you to come in and assist with fire attack with ladder 12. Copy, fire attack. Four thirty two fuel cylinder twenty five gallons. Some of our viewers have seen previous videos where firefighters open and close the bale on the hose line very rapidly, and they've voiced concern over the water hammer effect, which could cause damage to the pump on the fire truck or, in some extreme instances, even the water system itself. Prior to teaching this to firefighters at South Metro, our training bureau met with our fleet bureau and they did testing and checked the amount of back pressure to the pump and found that it's actually very minimal and did not ever get to a level that would be increasing damage to the truck. So when you see a South Metro firefighter opening and closing the bale rapidly like that, it's to help unkink the hose line and ensure that adequate pressure will be flowing from the end of the nozzle. One five copy, we'll get the water supply land. In command dispatch. Go ahead, ma'am. Something of size for both gas and electric. 35 minute ETA for both, and you're at 10 minutes. Okay, I copy a 10 minute ticker, and I have the update on the, uh, the utilities. 1425. All units operating on South Ridgeway, be advised we do have reports that the homeowner is out of the building. There's one cat unaccounted for in the house. One, one cat. Copy, one cat. This incident serves as another example of why South Metro's ladder trucks carry water and a pump and hose. So if they're the first unit on scene, they can rapidly make a positive difference in conditions for the people who might be inside the home and certainly to conserve as much property as possible until an engine company arrives.
thankfully no one was injured in this fire, investigators determined that it was accidental and started in the garage. The next fire started right as things were getting bitter cold, and in fact, some of the water on the ground from the initial hose lines immediately froze to the surface of the street. Water froze to the firefighters, so it gave them almost a foamy looking appearance, but that was ice buildup on them. Ice also built up on the roof and on the rungs of the ladders, so it was an extra dangerous scene for our firefighters. When they arrived, they found very heavy fire conditions throughout the main level of the home. Ladder 12, engine 11, engine 13, medic 11, battalion chief 2, safety 35, channel SMS off 3, reported residential structure fire, map page Q20D, 5112, South Newton Street. Ladder 12, engine 11, engine 13, medic 11, battalion chief 2, safety 35, channel SMS off 3, reported residential structure fire. Yeah, let's see if we gotta get a little smoke on. Let's go ahead and go from Heavy fire conditions in the attic windows are failing them, the Charlie truck. Copy. Heavy fire conditions in the attic, we have windows failing on the Charlie side. Medic? 11. Command. Ladder 12's Bravo team went to the roof for vertical ventilation. It's a technique that sometimes firefighters use to cut a hole in the roof, which allows heat and smoke to escape out of the top like a chimney and clears out the inside environment so that it's easier to see and work in. Thankfully, firefighters were able to rescue one dog and two cats from the home. Unfortunately, one of the cats was injured as well and had to have medical treatment. Investigators are unable to determine what caused the fire, but they believe that it was accidental in nature. This next incident occurred at about 1.30 in the morning, and it was bitter cold. This is when we hit that negative 25 degree wind chill. The 911 caller was inside the house and they reported that there was a smoke condition inside and they didn't know where it was coming from. When engine 15 arrived, they had smoke showing from a garage window and from the eaves of the house, and they began their fire attack. Engine 15, engine 17, battalion chief 2, Channel SMS off three, smoke investigation inside, map page U24B 7780, South Kid Carson Drive. Engine 15, engine 17, battalion chief two, channel SMS off three, smoke investigation inside. Before choosing how they would attack this fire, firefighters checked the interior of the home and found only light smoke conditions. 
To prevent further damage to the living area, they chose to attack the fire from the garage door rather than taking a hose line inside of the house. This proved to be the most effective way to both quickly put out the fire and reduce damage inside, which allowed the homeowners to reoccupy the house after the fire was extinguished. Thankfully, the family escaped without injuries and no pets were injured either. Investigators determined that improperly disposed of fireplace ashes are what caused this fire. One of the results of this cold snap were pipes freezing, and that includes domestic water lines that are in people's homes or businesses, and also some of the fire suppression system lines. So buildings that have fire sprinklers in them can be susceptible to freezing pipes. And when the temperature warms up just enough, sometimes those pipes burst. So our firefighters were busy responding to a ton of different burst water pipe calls. And they respond out, they shut the water off, and they try and mitigate any damage and look for hazards. One of the buildings that received that water damage was a local hotel. It was unoccupied and workers were inside trying to get everything back in order so the guests could come and stay at the hotel when a fire occurred in the ceiling above the swimming pool. Workers quickly identified that a fire was occurring. They safely evacuated everyone outside of the building and called 911. When firefighters arrived, they positioned on both sides of the hotel, advanced a hose line inside, pulled ceiling, and minimized that damage so that it didn't spread beyond the pool room. We have about two minutes to go. We need to be talking. We still don't have a lot of people there. Okay, I got you. Go now when you need to be looking. That's correct. Right. Okay, you guys can come out and recycle. You'll go on deck alpha side. Yeah, you can carry on. Since Connor is taking a little bit of time off of on call, you're going to be seeing a lot of Kim. Kim is PIO 13 if you're watching Pulse Point. And Kim, what's your full time job? I'm a community risk reduction specialist, so my job is to reduce 911 calls, but when they happen, now I'll cover them as well. So you're going to get to see a lot of Kim and a lot of Eric on incidents, and we'll make sure we stop by and visit Connor often as well. You might remember Kim from some of our previous vlogs like this one. Kim has a ton of experience in the fire service, both as a volunteer firefighter and EMT, and also working here at South Metro in risk reduction and public information. I do have some updates for you about our videos. As you've seen, we have Fleet Friday and Station Saturday coming back. We'll be bringing you vlogs more often and Day in the Life will return next month in March. We're really excited to bring you the first Day in the Life episode of 2021. It'll be a little different than some of the other ones and I know that you're probably gonna be really excited when you see it. So I'm gonna be excited to show you that one in a few weeks. 
Some of the many video requests that we have received have included a day in the life of a public information officer. And at least recently, that's been kind of hard for us to show you because we're working from home and that's not really an accurate representation of what the job is typically like. And our jobs are pretty unpredictable as far as responses go. There are days where there are no calls that a PIO will respond to and we're just working on various outreach projects or video projects. And then there's other times where we might wake up in the middle of the night and have to go to a fire. So uh, at least in the short term, rather than bringing you a random day in the life, I'm gonna start showing you a little bit more of what on-call life is like for me when I receive an incident, what's happening while I'm responding to an incident and when I'm on scene and what happens after to kind of give you a better idea of what life is like. And uh, we'll look at doing a full day later on this year. One of those ideas that I have is to bring you a day in the life of a PIO on the 4th of July or at least 4th of July weekend. You'll get to see all of the different places that I'll go, which typically will include community parades, uh, visiting with our fire marshal's office staff who are inspecting fireworks sites. We typically have upstaffing for wildland response, and that'll be a little bit more of an interesting day. But in the meantime, I'll start showing you a little bit more behind the scenes scenes of what my job is like. Before we go today, we have some patch shout outs. Well, actually more than patches here to share with you. So I have an entire package. We were very lucky to receive this from Maxwell Fire Department and EMS in Iowa. So we got a few different things here. We have their decal for the fire department. Very neat, like the black and white there the Maxwell EMS patch. The Iowa State Patrol Breast Cancer Awareness patch. And another Maxwell Fire Department patch. Super awesome. We also have a Maxwell EMS koozie And Eric and I both got t-shirts and sweatshirts. So this is the Maxwell EMS t-shirt. Here's the front of it, if I can hold it. There we go. And here's the back of it. All right, and one more. We have a sweatshirt. And this is the Maxwell Fire Department sweatshirt in Iowa. Thank you so much for trading with us. We can't wait to add these to our collection. Thank you all so much for tuning into our vlog. We always appreciate connecting with you and bringing you what's going on around South Metro's district. We hope that you have liked this video. Be sure you give it a thumbs up, share it with your friends. And if you haven't found the subscribe button, I know we say it in a lot of our videos, but go ahead and find that subscribe button wherever it is, give it a click. And that way you can know whenever we post new videos, you can be um, right at the forefront of watching them. Thank you all so much. We hope you stay safe out there and have a great day.